It is heralded as being the greatest EQ to ever exist. It's a staple in DAWs and studios all across the world. For what seems like eons, the FabFilter Q3 has been on top of the music production world. It seems that its grip on the music production space would never waver until now. I present to you Matt's EQ Trio. What I believe to be is the Q3 killer. Now, before we start this conversation, go ahead and ring the bell, hit the like button to support the channel. All right, let's go ahead and establish some of the similarities between Q3 and Matt's EQ offerings. First, both of these EQs have great GUIs, great workflows. Both of these have an auto gain feature. Workflows are very similar. You'll find using the Q bandwidth, very similar, mid-side processing, so on and so forth. Now we also have to look at how they differ. The Fab Filter has two things that the matte plugins don't. Dynamic EQ and the ability to sidechain. So once you understand those two things, then you can make your decision what's the best choice for you. Let's point out some things about the matte EQs. There are three EQs. One of them's called the EQ Orange. This one's fantastic for low end and mid range cleanup. Really good for suppressing noise. Phenomenal for mastering. EQ Red on the other hand is a bit more artistic in nature. You can think of this as a colorless correction EQ. EQ Blue is similar to Red, just has a lot more attitude and it has an incredible technology called FIDEF. More on that in a bit. Matt EQ also has the ability to gain invert, which I haven't really seen in any other EQ. So this makes for a fast workflow. These EQs offer a very unique construction. The results are basically an inaudible, unwanted sonic coloration. So you're not going to hear any artifacts, a lot more transparency and definition than you usually get from your standard EQs in the market. These EQs also offer a kind of analog like feel when working with baseband sample rates such as 44.1 or 48K. My favorite feature is definitely the inbuilt keyboard that has a tone generator that really makes for quick location of either trouble spots or, or spots that you want to emphasize. So let me just show you a quick example. Like here, if I wanna move this to the key of C or D, all I have to do is right click on the specific note and I am there. There's also a nice feature which some people may overlook, but it's called sort. This is basically going to put every band in order so that you don't have to reorder them time after time after time. So you just hit this little button and regardless of where you positioned the EQ nodes, everything just gets organized. So that's great for workflow, obviously. So let me just emphasize one more thing here. The EQ Orange is the very best for difficult equalizing tasks. You don't want it to be heard, but you want it to make an imprint. The quality, the technology inside of these plugins is second to none. It doesn't smear any transients or add any unwanted coloration. And so this is why I really love and am leaning in the direction of these plugins because I am hearing a new kind of clarity that I've never experienced before. The idea here is not to get rid of the Q3. That's, that's not what I'm saying. I think another way to approach this is I want you to think of the Q3 as an effect when you want to add color and when you want to use a dynamic EQ. The EQ Orange is a linear phase equalizer that can be handled exactly like a classic typical parametric. The real difference is in the sonic result. It's gonna EQ without coloration or any artifacts. This is what mastering engineers and mixing engineers have always been dreaming about, and now it's here. So let's go ahead and hear these in action. Okay, let's take a listen to the song. Okay. 
Okay, remember the sound of that bass because I'm currently using a linear phase EQ by Logic in mid mode. And I'm going to go ahead and create this curve 30 hertz low cut high pass, then a small bump here with bell filter at 100, and then I dip, let's say 175, 200. We'll cut at 30 hertz. We will create a bell filter here at 100 hertz. Maybe reduce the Q a little bit, and then we will dip at 175. So simply by mimicking the curve, let's see what a difference we have created. Something to point out, we do have an oversample mode. It says if you're making any changes above 4K, the song quality will be better with oversampling enabled. When working with frequencies, Below 4K, it's better to disable oversampling. So because we're working on the low end, we're not going to use oversample mode. Let's give it a shot. So just that simple move drastically improved the quality of the mix. You can see in my previous mastering chain, I'm using a brick wall limiter at 20 and at 20K. And so that's something else that I can recreate. Let me go ahead and just use the same instance here. And we're gonna go ahead and enter mono mode. And if I control click, we will do a high cut. And I'll bring this all the way back to let's say 18, 20K, somewhere around there. Let's see what kind of a difference we have made. Okay, so let's go ahead and bypass the unit. Let's see what it sounds like without it. really got to hear this thing at work it really is quite amazing all right so we heard the vocalist come in at that point you can see that i'm using a couple of instances of the q3 here just to do some notch filters and so what i want to do here is i want to try and see if i can restore the voice very processed uh was recorded on a decent setup but maybe if we can bring some life to this by using the EQ Red. So let's give that a go. We're just gonna listen to the vocal. We're gonna try to see if we can get a better sound. So just to be clear, this is before. On the corner, blisters on my feet. On the corner. Okay, very saturated. Let's see if we can get a better sound. Start with a nice low cut. I'll go all the way up to, let's say 150 or so. Maybe I'll dip somewhere in here and let me go ahead and audition these frequencies okay so i think even just this alone is going to make a big difference let me go ahead and see what this sounds like uh i will use the auto gain feature so that basically it compensates for any choices that I've made in volume. So here is the matte EQ red. On the corner, blisters on my feet. 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 On the corner, blisters. So it has a really rich sound. I really like what I'm hearing here. And if we put the Q3 back in the mix without the red, let's listen to what we got. On the corner, blisters on my feet. On the corner, blisters on. Yeah, I think some people would say that that sounds a little bit more harsh. Go back to the red. 
If you wanted to get more surgical, we can go ahead and start to zoom into the frequency curves here. Really incredible workflow. Let's continue moving. Okay, so we do have a drop here, bar 37, and I want to introduce Blue. This is my personal favorite. I love the way this thing sounds. It has a particularly rich color that uh, I just need in my mixes. I just love the way it sounds. Uh, something to add here is that this FIDEF technology that's behind it, you can see that it's right here on the top right. If I control click, there's different algorithms that help for various reasons. But if I hover over, you see that it says FIDEF is fully active audio effect in circuit. FIDEF can be disabled within the preferences. So from my understanding, this works when I click on an EQ note and I am processing above three decibels, that's when this comes into play. And what we're gonna get, the, the actual thing that we're going to, to be able to listen to is a little bit intangible. Here, let me read you something. It says, FIDEF is a very low amplitude psychoacoustic stimulus designed specifically for audio engineers. It makes a receptive brain relax and pay closer attention to an incoming audio stimulus. So this is some next level technology. And if you're ready for that in your productions, then go ahead and check out this incredible plugin. You really have to hear this for yourself. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and insert this on the flute. Here's what I have before we insert the blue. All right, so we have a really trippy flute part. And so basically, I'm going to remove all that low end, take away some of that high end, and just see if I could focus on the mids. Maybe we can focus on the difference or the sides. Uh, and let's see what we get here. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a little bit of gain on the way out, and let me bypass this. I cannot wait for you to actually demo this and try this yourself, so you can hear the subtlety involved and think, I'm using this on one track. When you use this on three, five, seven, ten, so on and so forth, you're really going to hear such a drastic difference. Let me know what you think in the comments section when you do. Okay, I'm going to make one more correction in the drums. I have a part in the bridge here where the drums get kind of really thick. Let me go ahead and play that and I will mute all the vocals. Here we go. Okay, so you can hear, gets really thick. So one of the things that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert the orange on one of the bass parts that's been consolidated here. I'm gonna cut at 190, and that is going to cut off all the mono stuff that's going on. And then I'm pushing out some of that mid information out to the sides, and so that's gonna help drastically. Another thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to insert the orange onto the drum group. And that's really going to help clarify uh, just some of that bass information that's trying to cut through. But again, because of the smearing and, and artifacts, it's just not able really to translate. So uh, again, I will make that adjustment on the spot. Let's go. <laughs>
another W, we're getting a little bit more of that clarity that we need in a very transparent, subtle fashion. This is why the EQ Orange, very versatile, good for mixing and mastering, great for low-end information as well. So my conclusion, Matt EQ has done something really special. I didn't think that there would ever be an EQ that would replace the Q3, but I am certainly going to make this transition. And instead of creating one EQ, Matt Plugins has made three individual plugins, each with their own construction, optimal performance. Each of these is amazing in their own right, but together they make a crazy good set of premium equalizing tools. If you can't afford Matt EQ's plugins, I think the Q3 is an excellent alternative. If you do want to check out a secondary option, I highly recommend Whole Grain Digital's Trio or Quartet. Check out the link in the description. Matt's plugins exceed all current hardware and software solutions. Again, the GUI is amazing. You have superior fidelity with these plugs. Go ahead and check them out and let me know if you agree with me. Let me know if you see my reasoning. Here we have three plugins that are dedicated to specific tasks. And that's a very different thing than having a one size fits all solution for all your EQ needs. Go ahead and check them out. I'll leave a link in the description and tell them Eddie Gray sent you. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna catch you guys on the next one. Stay up.